afternoon. Uh, Dr. Mike Wilde, Vice President, Medical Officer for Sanford and Sioux Falls. And just really want to thank you again for helping us get this message out today. Once again, we're seeing hospitals around us filling up with COVID patients. Like last year, our projections show that it'll not be long until those type of types of numbers and percentages peak. We believe Sioux Falls is about three to four weeks away from peaking in terms of cases and hospital capacity. The time to take action is now. No one wants to go through the trying times we experienced last year. Everything from hospitalizations and restrictions to closings and cancellations. School has just started. All of us are committed to the well-being of our children and recognize the benefit of in-person school. There's uniform agreement regarding the education, safety, health, including mental health benefits of in-person school. We want to endorse safe, logical mitigation strategies to avoid the pediatric illnesses and hospitalizations in our communities. Given the alarming surge of COVID-19, we are encouraged our com communities to escalate safety efforts. That includes recommending all students and staff use masks and other mitigation strategies to protect our students and prevent the spread of the virus. No one likes this, but we believe it will make a big difference in the lives of our children. As of yesterday, for some statistics, 129 of 136 COVID patients in Sanford Health Hospitals are unvaccinated. 35 of 37 COVID patients in the ICU in Sanford Health Hospitals are unvaccinated. 18 of the 19 COVID patients in the Sanford Health Hospitals on ventilators are unvaccinated. We are concerned if hospitals fill up with COVID patients, we will not be able to provide the same quality of care to our patients who are coming in with heart attacks, strokes, or other illnesses. The best thing we can do is get vaccinated. It is safe, it is effective, and it's what is gonna help put a halt to this pandemic. Wear a mask, something every employee at Sanford Health is now doing when they're in one of our facilities. Continue to distance as able and practice hand hygiene. We must get the spread under control. The majority of these cases are preventable. Mask back up and get vaccinated. Thank you. With that, I'll welcome Dr. Basil from Avira. Thank you, Dr. Wilde. So Avera similarly has seen a significant increase in both cases and hospitalizations over the last two to three weeks. Also very similar to Sanford, we've seen a very distinct large majority of our uh, admissions are in the unvaccinated population. And moreover, we've seen a significant shift this year with the Delta variant not only is it more contagious, it seems to be hitting younger age groups. We've seen about 20 year difference in the average age of admissions we saw last year versus the average age of admissions we're seeing this year. And so we've got those two major populations we're seeing being admitted now. Far and above, most of them are that unvaccinated population. Though we are seeing a few breakthrough cases in our elderly populations in their upper 80s and 90s, as well as our chronically ill population and that's about more of a 70, 75 year old average age. And so we've got two distinct populations, about 50 years of age, average age for the unvaccinated versus about 72 for the vaccinated, which is a much smaller number similar to Sanford. And so we're excited about the fact that, you know, vaccinations continue to increase again. All of the other efforts that we're gonna talk about today, whether that's masking or something else, are kind of temporary measures. Vaccination is the permanent solution so that we don't have to take any of these other measures anymore. And so first and foremost, if you're eligible for vaccination and haven't been so, I mean, the data is clear that those that are vaccinated are protected and it keeps you out of the hospital. A Couple other things that I wanted to mention, especially with school starting back up again. Over the summer, we all got kind of used to the levels of, of COVID being quite low in our community and we all got 
a little bit less concerned when one of our kids or one of our cells got cold and flu symptoms and we stopped getting tested as often for COVID. It's really important now, especially with your school age children, that if they do have any cough and cold symptoms, that very likely could be COVID again with the rates we're seeing in our communities. And so it's important to number one, either yourself don't go to work if you have cough and cold symptoms, Number two, don't send your kid to school if they've got cough or cold symptoms so that they're not spreading it. And then just as important, get them tested to know for sure so that we can reduce the spread. And so that's something that we've all kind of backed off a little bit during the summer, but we've got to start thinking that way again. You know, uh, runny nose, sore throat is not necessarily just a cold anymore. It very likely could be COVID and we need to get tested and to stay isolated until that test result comes back. And then the third thing that I will hit again is the vaccination, because that is just so key. We have seen interest in vaccines really start to pick back up again. Uh, we're close to double the rate of vaccinations on a weekly basis of what we were uh, in July. And now with the federal government announcing that booster doses will be coming probably the end of September, We've got a window of opportunity here where we've got plenty of vaccine supply. We've got plenty of opportunity. It's easy. You can walk in many locations to get vaccinated. Once those booster doses start coming, we've got huge interest in people wanting that third dose. And we're going to want to get the, especially the elderly, vaccinated as quickly as we can. So that we've got this window of time now where you can go and get vaccinated before you're having to compete with all the people wanting booster doses. So go to vaccine.gov if you don't know where to get vaccinated in your area and figure out what's the closest location and how to get vaccinated because we, we really do have that, that time period. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Chima, who's the Director of Public Health for the City of Sioux Falls. Dr. Chima. Good afternoon. So I think it's important, as has been shared today, right, that emphasis on the vaccination. And it's important, again, to emphasize that these vaccines are safe and effective. If you look at the numbers, more than a billion people have gotten some form of COVID vaccine in the world. And here in our community, more than 138,000 members of our community have already got uh, fully vaccinated. So think about it. There's a lot of people that have gotten this vaccine locally here in Sioux Falls. And we know that these vaccines are safe and effective. And any concerns that we have about side effects are far outweighed by what we know COVID does to your body, right? What I, in terms of making you really ill, being hospitalized, and the risk of death. So it's not too late to get vaccinated. In fact, as uh, has been pointed out, this might be a perfect opportunity, a perfect window. Think about the risk presented by the Delta variant, knowing that it's much more transmissible. We are seeing a bit more aggressive disease in young people than we saw before. But also, you have this window where Vaccines are very, uh, you know, readily available today. You can walk into any very uh, primary care location, any Sanford location, come to the health department, any pharmacy. So really, you don't have to think about it. Think about any pharmacy you know, whether it's Walgreens or Hy-Vee or Lewis Drug, walk in and demand vaccination and, you know, it's, it could, you could have the vaccination done without having prior appointment. So it's very easy. You also, if you don't know how to get an appointment, you can simply call 211. If you just don't know how to figure out the right place for you, call 211, 211 can direct you. If you also have transportation barriers, 211 can help address that. So uh, can even help you find a free uh, lift ride to get to your vaccination appointment. We cannot emphasize that enough. Vaccine is the way we get out of the situation. I think we all desire to get back to life as we knew it prior to the beginning of the pandemic. And we're very convinced that vaccine is the way we get there. If we look at what's happening nationally, we see very clearly that communities that have high vaccination rates are seeing fewer and fewer infections. But think about in the southern part of the US, for example, where we have le far less vaccination rates, we can see uh, the surges that are happening uh, around the Gulf Coast right now. So in order for us to minimize the risk and help our health systems manage capacity, it's important that we come together as a community and see what we can do to improve our vaccination rates. As has been pointed out, uh, there has been, the good news is that there has been a recent in, uh, increase in the rate of vaccinations we're doing in the past few weeks, better than June and July, but we need to do much more. The latest data we have suggests that only, still only about half of our population are fully vaccinated, uh, and another maybe 6% uh, in addition to that have received the first dose, but are not fully vaccinated. 
So we're still in the 50s when it comes to the total population. If you look at adults alone, that's a much higher number. But the total population, we're still in the 50s of those that have gotten any dose of the vaccine. And we can do much better than that. So see this you know, as part of what we can do as a community is to come together, uh, figure out the resources. I cannot think of any, anything that is easier to get right now than the vaccine, because all you need to do is walk into any clinic or pharmacy location and you can get a shot. It's also important to emphasize that. I know there have been concerns. Maybe I'm gonna get a bill either now or in the future for the vaccine. These vaccines are free. You will never get a bill for it, uh, and they are safe and effective. Lastly, I think it's important to also continue to address as we get into, you know, we're getting into the flu season. So let's continue to take care of our general health, uh, take our wellness uh, visit seriously, get your flu shots as we get into the flu season. And just, you know, we know that some of the things we experienced last year was that having to put off other care, right, out of concerns about going to the hospital or clinic. I think we've kind of learned from that and we have a better way of uh, managing, you know, the disease where we can safely attend to whether it's a heart disease or, or, so don't put off your screenings, don't put off your regular medical visit. See that you keep your routine check with your provider so that we do not, you know, uh, have an unintended consequence where we have, you know, people dying from other conditions that could have been treated if they, has, if they had a primary care visit. So uh, lastly, I want to emphasize the importance of community in beating this pandemic. We're not gonna address this by looking at, you know, uh, ourselves as individuals. We need to come together as a community and think about how we can uh, be there for each other, help see that everybody gets the, the support and help they need, and do our part, right? Get vaccinated, uh, you know, follow the measures that will help us to reduce the spread. So the question is, uh, what is the best advice for students and teachers as they enter the classroom setting? And uh, the advice, number one, is if of an eligible age, would be to get vaccinated. Uh, that, that is by far the best strategy for preventing uh, your own COVID and the spread of COVID within uh, close communities such as schools. The second advice, as I alluded to, and, and uh, all of us in our statements, is really that own uh, your own protection, the distancing, the hygiene, the masking. And we certainly want to emphasize that as we have started uh, this school year. Yeah, so I think both of our projections, I'll let you talk as well from Sanford's, do show that we expect things to continue to increase for the next four to maybe six weeks here, and then hopefully level off at that point. Uh, I don't think we're gonna get back to the same level as we were at last year, but there's a lot of unknowns with the Delta variant and how, when will that top be? And so uh, we're already above what our secondary peak was last spring and we've blown right through that level. And so I just soon not keep going off to the races. Yeah, I agree. We uh, anticipate, uh, as I alluded to in the statement, uh, uh, peaking toward the end of September, early October. And I, I think it's important to point out the mental strain that we see within our staff, and especially those who have been uh, really heavily involved with COVID for some time. Uh, certainly a, a fatigue, uh, a kind of a, a very challenging time for a lot of that staff. You can imagine their uh, the energy they've devoted to this and continue to devote to, to this. And the best way you can really help that is really by taking care of yourself, getting vaccinated, influencing those around you to get vaccinated. That is the absolute best way that we can take the top off this peak. What is it about the Delta variant that, uh, that's uh, causing us to have these conversations and, and putting people in the hospital? Um, it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, our statements alluded to it, it was it was an okay time uh, back in the spring and the summer, and that certainly is not a disrespect to anyone who contracted COVID during that time. But really, there weren't many cases, and all of a sudden you started to see uh, the potential within the Delta variant. And the reality is the Delta variant spreads much more easily, which is. Uh, uh, an advantage to the propagation. And we've been saying that really for several months is that the more variants we have, the more that they're going to uh, be in, they're gonna spread uh, because of traits that allow them to do that. Any, that's, it's, it's a virus within our society and anything that, that causes its propagation is gonna be a benefit to it and it's going to spread. And the Delta variant's a classic example. 
So the original COVID or uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus we've been dealing with on average would spread to about one and a half to two people. The Delta variant on average spreads to about five to nine people. We think it may have uh, a little bit of uh, change with being a little, make some, making certain populations a little more ill, but the key to the Delta variant is uh, the way it spreads and how rapidly it spreads. And that's why it seems to have really come upon us here uh, as August has progressed and why we're really ramping up that conversation and really uh, getting communication out about getting vaccinated now because the Delta vi variant really spreads fast. Do you have comments on that, Dave? Maybe one additional comment I'll make about the Delta variant to be very clear is the vaccine is still very effective against the Delta variant. And both of our systems have seen that for you know, the patients we're admitting are the unvaccinated patients. And so the vaccine is protective, even though it spreads really quickly in the unvaccinated population, the vaccine does remain uh, effective. And so that's why we continue to push it so much. No, I think uh, Basil had kind of hit the nail on the head with regards to the difference the vaccine is making, right? We look at, we're seeing the numbers locally that those that are getting hospitalized for the most part is those that are unvaccinated and it supports what we've seen nationally. There are figures that have been put out that suggest that, you know, in some studies about 97% of those that have been hospitalized and, uh, you know, that died from COVID this year are, uh, are those that are unvaccinated. So in as much as, you know, we know there are more breakthrough cases with, with, with the Delta variant than we've seen than earlier in the pandemic, the vaccine is doing the primary job you want from a vaccine, which is prevent people from getting severely ill and, you know, hopefully not dying from the disease. So I think that's important message is really clear. Globally, it's, it's clear that what we have now is, a, is an epidemic of the unvaccinated. So if, you know, we, it's like we're living in two worlds. If you're vaccinated, you're living in a different world from if you're, if you're unvaccinated. I think that's a message that needs to go through in the community. People realize that you are at a much higher risk of having a severe outcome from, it doesn't matter how, how old or how young you are. If you're unvaccinated, you're at a high risk at this point in time. So the question is trends of uh, people coming into the hospital. Um, and it, it is um, obviously the statistics I pointed out, it is predominantly the unvaccinated. Um, it is the high risk, the categories we talked about uh, last fall, last spring. It's that uh, unvaccinated older population, uh, cardiovascular disease, obesity, and things like that. We are seeing, because this is so transmissible, uh, that the more people that get infected, the more that are gonna wind up in the hospital. And unfortunately, that now applies to children because it's so transmissible within uh, the, that vulnerable population. And so that's why across the nation, we're seeing more children being hospitalized. We're seeing children being hospitalized here as well, just because the, the odds are the more that get it, uh, there's going to be some that wind up in the hospital. That's that's what happens with a lot of our infectious diseases. So we are going to see that is see it in that population as well. We will see it in vaccinated populations for that same reason. The vaccines are incredibly good at preventing COVID, preventing severe COVID, but they are not 100%. And so the more people that get it, the more likely that is to occur as well. Yeah, in regards to the trend of what we're seeing in the population that's being admitted, it's that big shift in age downwards that we're seeing this year. Last year in November, our average age that we were admitting was somewhere around 69. This year, you know, the unvaccinated average age of the patient we're admitting is about 50 or 51. Almost 20 degrees, 20 years younger this year are being admitted. And so last year it was really pretty uncommon to see people in their teens, 20s, and 30s to get admitted. And if so, they usually had pretty significant chronic illnesses. Now we're seeing a lot more uh, younger individuals with no, you know, real comorbidities that would make you think they would be at risk that get admitted. And so it's a big shift from what we saw last year.